Greetings, Diocese of Olympia. The 78th General Convention of the Episcopal Church was held this past summer in Salt Lake City, Utah. Many great things came from this gathering, including the election of our new presiding bishop, Michael Curry, the first African-American presiding bishop, and many resolutions which move us and challenge us to new things in our church. The thing about resolutions is this, they're just words on paper. Like that prayer in our prayer book, unless they are read, marked, inwardly digested, and most of all put into action, they are pretty much worthless. In early December, I met with the other 15 bishops tasked with writing a pastoral letter on racism. We met because we were convicted when we gathered at General Convention for our first brief meeting that the last thing the church really needed from us right now was yet another letter on racism more words. Instead, what we needed to do was work on our own racism inside each of us and inside our house of bishops. That work continues and I have to tell you I'm very inspired by the work we did in Chicago and the work we have before us. One bishop colleague of mine, also part of those 16 bishops who gathered there, remarked that our church often seems to be designed to make a point but not a difference. I think he made a very good point himself. To make a difference, the resolutions have to be put into action. One resolution, CO19, entitled Establish a Response to Systemic Racial Injustice, had these words in it. Resolve the House of Bishops concurring that the 78th General Convention of the Episcopal Church confesses that despite repeated efforts at anti-racism training as well as racial justice and racial reconciliation initiatives including the passage of more than 30 general convention resolutions dating back to 1952 the abomination and sin of racism continue to plague our society and our church at great cost to human life and human dignity we formally acknowledge our historic and contemporary participation in this evil and repent of it and be it further resolved that in the wake of the brutal, overtly racist murders of nine of our Christian brothers and sisters of Emmanuel African Methodist Church on June 17, 2015, numerous inexcusable deaths of unarmed black men and youth at the hands of law enforcement personnel, and the moral atrocity of mass incarceration in which a hugely disproportionate number of persons of color have been unfairly caught in the net of an unjust criminal justice system. The 78th General Convention affirms as a top priority of the Episcopal Church in the upcoming triennium the challenging and difficult work of racial reconciliation through prayer, teaching, engagement, and action. It goes on, but I find these words to be the most important. The General Convention went on to approve a budget which includes two million dollars to be used at the discretion of the presiding bishop and the presiding officers to address this issue. In response to this and in our own diocese we have totally reimagined and redesigned our Dismantling Racism workshop and I soon will be making this training a requirement for all clergy and lay leaders within the diocese. We held our first training in early December and there will be many more to come. Some of you may want to read more, and I highly encourage that. Not long ago, I was transformed by reading a book by Tennessee Coates entitled Between the World and Me. It is so powerful, and many have been taken to a new level on this subject through reading it. I would include myself in that number. This is a long journey. One workshop will not transform and change us. Reading one book won't do it. This is daily work, hard work, which requires much vulnerability and trust. But it is a journey we have to take, and it's one that is long overdue. I'm asking you to join me in that work, being open to being transformed and learning new things about yourself and about our life together. My sisters and brothers, I wish you many blessings as we embark on that journey.